So it's official. Fall is upon us. You know, it's late, actually, as far as the calendar goes. But I'm putting out my fall ocean bars today. So, thus, the official, because I'm putting my lotion bars out today, so it's official for me. And that's what we are talking about today. And before you, you know, leave or whatever, we're actually going to be talking about some very cool things about lotion bars, how to formulate them, and kind of why. Because that's a whole ass science in and of itself. And I'm going to tell you more about said whole ass science in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 132 of 365 days of soap. You know, year two. And we're doing another lotion bar video. And I know, we actually do them a lot, but I actually like to talk about, and I thought it would be fun to talk about the oils that go into formulating a good lotion bar, and why I select what I do, and also why I don't use coconut oil for lotion bars. And the reason why I thought this would be a fun video is because, you know, I have new soap apprentices and I am teaching them things for the very first time and they are asking the questions that a very first timer would ask. Like, well, why do you put this in? And that's cool. So, you know, as they're learning and testing me and asking the questions so they can build their soapy knowledge, I thought I would share some of that stuff with you guys. So that's what we are doing today. Let's go make the fall lotion bars. They're a lot of fun and we will talk about formulations and all the jazz, you know, there. Okay, so today we are doing lotion bars and lotion bars, I get asked tons of questions about. We've done them a lot on the channel before and I've been asked a lot of questions about substitutions. Now, First and foremost, I'm always going to tell people that, oh yeah, totally, you can sub, you know. But with lotion bars, the biggest thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is the comedogenic ratings of the oils and butters that you are putting in. Now, comedogenic ratings range from zero to five, with zero being the least pore clogging and five being the most pore clogging. Now any oil or butter underneath two, so two or less is considered not pore clogging, so non-comedogenic. And now why do we care about pore clogging? Obviously we care about pore clogging because we do not want anything to clog our pores, cause acne, um, you know, make our texture and our skin look gross, all the things. And so when formulating a lotion bar or any leave-on product, you really want to pay attention to, sure, sure, the fatty acid profiles to a point, but more importantly, the comedogenic ratings, so you're not giving the end user something that's going to clog pores or irritate eczema or acne or all of the jazz. Now, for a basic lotion bar recipe, I always do two parts wax. Now, in this instance, we're going to do beeswax. Now, beeswax actually does have a 0 to 2 comedogenic rating, so that's awesome. And one part cocoa butter. 
Now cocoa butter, if we look on the comedogenic scales, actually has a rating of four. However, cocoa butter is also really good for areas in your, on your body like your eyes, like your eyelids and under your eye area and other more sensitive bits. And so since we're just using one part, we might be able to really make up for this four rating in another place. And so another piece that we have with this is going to be five parts oils. Now this is where you can really start playing with the different properties of your fatty acids that go in there as well as the penetration levels of your oils. So if you have a really deep penetrating oil that's slow for the skin to absorb, that's great. Also make sure to pair that with a fast penetrating oil that the skin absorbs really quickly to help soak that deep penetrating like an avocado oil, for example, further into your skin. Awesome. Now in addition to those five parts of the oils, you're also going to do three parts butters. This is another area where you can play with, again, not only the fatty acids and what it does to the skin, but the comedogenic ratings. So this right here is going to be your base stock recipe for a lotion bar. In addition to this, you're going to be, or I personally, add extracts at 1%. I also add scent as desired and within the usage ratings of the scent for a leave-on product. And I also add for this particular amount, if we were going in ounces for all of this, so we have 11 total ounces, I would be adding three teaspoons of arrowroot. Is that a tablespoon? I never know those conversions. So, but this is going to come later. First, we need to figure out what these parts here are going to be, right? Okay, so if we have two ounces of beeswax at zero, and we have one ounce of cocoa butter at four. Five parts oils. Now, for this particular recipe, I want to play with some oils that I don't think I've actually played with in lotion bars with you guys before. And I'm going to be putting in, let's say two ounces of Abyssinian oil. Now, Abyssinian has a comedogenic rating of zero and it's really high in oleic acid. So I'm going to put two of the parts of that five part for the Abyssinian. Abyssinian. I don't know how to pronounce that, guys. You know how it works phonetically down below. And I'm also going to include in this, because we are still kind of working with this four here, we have a little bit of wiggle room, I am also going to put into this a castor oil, one ounce of castor, now you can never go, it's really important not to go too heavy with castor oil on anything. It's very high in ricinoleic acid as we know, but if you put too much castor oil, especially in a leave-on product, you're going to be dealing with issues of it being too sticky. But for this particular thing, castor oil is good for most skin types and especially the oily and acne prone because of its low comedogenic rating. Now for the remaining three ounces of oil or two ounces of oils in this, I am going to put in an avocado. Now the reason for that is it's fall slash winter time and I really like a deep penetrating really heavy hitter for the lotion bars in the winter. And so we're going to include the avocado oil in here which is great for dry and acne prone skin and it has a comedogenic rating of three. So. We've got two that are kind of problematic here, but because of the rest of the amounts with this, it's all evening out right now to be about a two so far, okay? Now, for the butters that we put into this, we need three parts of butters. Now, avocado butter has a very high comedogenic rating, so I am not going to be using that for this particular recipe because we already have the avocado oil, and so it's kind of like, why do both? Mango and shea both have very low comedogenic ratings. Now, for this, because I'm a sucker for shea just across the board, I'm going to put all three of those butter parts in shea. Now, 
you could at this point put in instead of just straight shea you could do half shea half mango you could do shea and coconut oil i suppose but we're going to talk during the making of this about why i personally don't put coconut oil in anything involving really leave-on products but you know now it's time to get all the all the stuff out and and do the thing so that's what we're going to do now okay now i already have the bees or any real wax will do so you can use a candelia wax you can use an emulsifying wax depending on what it's made out of pay attention to that because that's a whole ass thing too now in this particular instance i am making a triple batch of all of this so my one part cocoa is actually going to go to three ounces which i will be putting in with gloved hands you guys all know proper safety when you are dealing with any products that you are making and doing the things and so gloved hands for something like this for sure because we want to keep everything nice and clean and awesome yes so three parts of my cocoa butter and since i'm doing two parts of the abyssinian abyssinian i don't know how to i really don't know how to pronounce this one guys but i've used it a lot so maybe i should figure it out so we're going to put two parts of this, which means since I'm tripling the batch, six ounces. Hopefully I have enough in the thing. Now, as I said before, coconut oil is something that I am asked a lot about when it comes to lotion bars, and I don't put it in. The reason I don't put it in is because first, it's kind of like a cheap oil to put into something that you're selling at kind of a high price point. And so to me, it's always been, well, why would I... Why would I buy, you know, a coconut oil lotion bar if I can just go to my kitchen and slather some lotion on my body or some coconut oil on my body, right? But also, coconut oil actually has a pretty high comedogenic rating. And so that's something that I am hesitant to put into a product like this because my ultimate goal in making a lotion bar is always going to be it's good for all skin types. So I don't have to worry about anybody's pores getting clogged or having an eczema flare up or an acne flare up or anything like that. And so I don't wanna mess around with that, but also just finding the right sweet spot for coconut oil in this, considering it's a semi-solid, it can get difficult. And so if you really, really wanted to, or you were in a pinch and you absolutely had to put coconut oil in something, I would say sure do so, but make it like, one of the three parts of the butter portion of this and really no more than that. Now, since we're doing three parts of butters, we're going to be putting in nine ounces of shea, again, because we're triple batching this. Okay, so the shea butter is going to go in again at nine ounces. Now, I use as unrefined shea as I can get. And so for that reason, this shea butter is very, very dark. It definitely has a very interesting nutty aroma to it and it will impart a beautiful natural yellow color to the bar which is a little bit difficult and not great because this particular bar I want to go blue with but you know whatever it'll be fine now you don't necessarily have to use an unrefined shea I choose to because when you start refining it and bleaching it out and removing the color you're also unfortunately removing a lot of the really beneficial awesome things all the antioxidants and the vitamins and all of that jazz yes i did say vitamins okay so now that this is all in it is ready to be put into the microwave or your double boiler or your crock pot however you heat up your your butters until everything is fully melted and ready for the next step okay now after this has been fully melted down i like to keep it at heat for a little bit it is now time to scent it color it put in the extract and go ahead and the air root powder and pour it. Now for this, I'm going to use the Palo Santo and we see here for lotion, it's 9.27%. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 5% for this one because why not? Now, keep in mind when you are working with something like a, an unrefined shea butter, or 
a cocoa butter or a beeswax. These all have very distinctive smells, right? And the distinctive smell that comes from like the cocoa butter and the beeswax, well, they play really nicely with each other. And the nuttiness of the shea butter can definitely sort of ground those scents as well, but they do become very grounding, very deep scents. And so if you are using an unrefined shea and a cocoa and a beeswax, you definitely want to select a scent that's not going to be super light and airy because the cocoa and the shea and the bees are going to overpower that for sure. Now, with all of that, that doesn't mean that you, I don't know, have to forego shea and cocoa in a lotion bar recipe. In fact, I honestly believe you never should do so. But if you're wanting a more airy kind of spring or floral scent or something in your lotion bars, I would suggest using an unrefined shea in those cases or swapping the shea out for a mango to really help with the scent sticking. And obviously for products like lotion bars, you consider that a leave-on product, so you follow those ratings, usage, those usage ratings. And I am also going to be putting in a mermaid blue mica from Brambleberry, mostly because I want it to be gone. So I'm super tired of Brambleberry's labels not working, and so I'm trying to use up all of their micas so I never have to buy from them again. Now, as I said, I like to keep this at heat. It's not super necessary to do so with a lotion bar just because it's so well formulated with a number of other oils and butters. And so shea is essentially the smallest part in all of this. And so it's unlikely to have any of the graininess issues that we normally have with a shea. Now, the, the arrowroot powder and the extract I put in after I have scented and mixed it thoroughly and colored. And today I'm going to be using agave extract for this at 1% of the batch. And then once all of that is fully incorporated, it really is just a matter of pouring into the molds and letting everything firm up. Now, with this firming up process, if you are making a whole bunch of these so of these uh, lotion bars and you need your molds back, I recommend popping this into the freezer or the fridge for you know 10, 15 minutes and going from there, which is exactly what I ended up having to do with the prior batch of this. So my molds are ready to go, but I just used them for the exact same thing before, so they might be a little weird. And also this whole, Jesus Christ, I haven't been in frame this whole time, guys. Oh my God. Filming in the new setup is a little bit weird. So you let me know if you like the new counters and filming on the counters, or if you find this to be kind of distracting with all the different colors going on. It's definitely a new, it's definitely a new setup and I'm learning, but I'm wondering if maybe it wouldn't be better to have the the white background for the pouring again because while the counters are beautiful and I'm super duper proud of them I'm wondering if we're not I don't know we might be creating something that we don't really want as far as the visual whatever and for this video it's all going to be probably not fully in frame because it's kind of a temporary setup waiting for Mr. Soap and Clay to mount my recording stuff from the ceiling so it doesn't bounce and so it doesn't it's not so close to the the counter and also trying to figure out a nice angle to get the glare out whatever these are things you don't care about as far as the production value and like what goes into the background of all of this but you might care as far as you know the visual that you're seeing and whether or not you like it. Now, yeah, because this is weird, right? You can totally see, or not see rather, any of that. Like that's kind of a trippy thing. It looks like I'm pouring onto the direct counter from what I can see in the 
the video right now. So this is kind of wild. Now, this particular recipe that I gave, remember, it's uh, 33 total ounces because I tripled this, the base recipe. And that is going to get me six of my full-size lotion bars and 12 of my minis. So just keep that in mind. I think my, my full-size lotion bars are three and a half ounces. My minis are 1.5 or two ounces. I don't know. I don't know. We'll weigh them and we'll test them. We'll do everything at the end after these have all firmed up. But that's what is next for all of this. They are going to firm up and then we will give them a test. Okay, now on to the unmolding. These have set up in their molds, not in a fridge or freezer, for around 30 minutes or so. And you see the residue that's left afterwards. This is why, especially for the plastic molds, I would recommend putting them in the fridge or freezer for, you know, 10, 15, 20, whatever, to make them nice and firm so they come out easier. But that said, these ones are coming out pretty easy, minus the unfortunate residue that can alter the overall design. And so that's not, you know, as cool, but also completely fine. These are handmade products. And so the expectation is they're going to be not completely perfect to look like it was, you know, done in a manufacturing facility. Now the silicone ones, they come out very easily. Also interesting to know is the color difference here. Remember I did blue. I did a mermaid blue mica from Brambleberry and it's green. And it's green because, well, the shea butter is really, really dark. So this is something that, again, I would recommend you pay attention to when you are using unrefined shea. And if this is not something that you want or you have your heart set on a blue, you might not want to use the unrefined shea. Okay, now for the fall line, we did end up with three different scent varieties. So we have the Palo Santo from the Midwest Fragrance Company. And this guy here is the Enchanted Myth from Sierra Candles, which I love, love, loved. And then we also did a Peach Amaretto, also using the Midwest Fragrance Company's scents. We did uh, one part cherry amaretto to three parts of the strawberry peach champagne. All super delightful. Love all of them. They're going to be, I think, really good fall moving into the winter scents. So that'll give me time to figure out what my winter scents are going to be for the holiday line. But, you know, now since we're, since we're talking so much about formulating a good lotion bar, we're going to use, you know, a lotion bar. And luckily I had a little bit left in this badge after everything had been filled, that I have an extra one to play with. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the cool part about a lotion bar is, again, it is solid in nature, and so it ships well even in the hot summer months, and it applies very nicely. It's very smooth, so it applies beautifully to the skin, and the heat of your body actually melts it and allows it to just glide on beautifully, and you don't really need a lot at all. I'm just oversaturating my my arm right now just because and you just swipe it on your skin give it a nice rubby rub no greasy look whatsoever nice and hydrated nice and moisturized and that stays with you all day and it has some really cool locking into your skin properties because of the shea butter and the cocoa butter and the beeswax to that so all of that beautiful moisture is, is locked in all day long you smell delightful all day and yeah, there's that. But yeah, so more of an in-depth look into lotion bars, I think. Definitely something that you guys should, you know, consider making, formulating. But again, pay attention to the comedogenic ratings really before everything else when it comes to the oils and butters that you're going to be using. And there you have it, a whole lot of lotion bars and hopefully a whole lot of lotion bar knowledge for you to take with you on your soapy, lotiony journey, really. So I hope you guys had a good time with this. The lotion bars, if you are not interested at all in making them, and you know, I get it because a lot of you are not, 
they are available right now at soapandclay.com. So go check those out. Go pick them up. These are the limited fall line. So, you know, they're here for a little bit or forever if I forget to take the listing off. I do that so often. I will forget to take a listing off the website and then someone will order it. And so I'll have to make a new batch of something. And then I have to keep them on the website for longer. So the rest of the, it's all thing. But anyway, yes, if you're interested in seeing, you know, what else we do and what else the Soap Prentices challenge my brain ball with as they're going around their new soapy journey, subscribe to the channel. That'd be excellent. For those of you who are subscribed to the channel, hey, thanks for being excellent. I appreciate you. I'm out of here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.